The Forney, Texas Tornado Lessons Learned We join Crosby Elementary School Principal Justin Vircher. Your weather was on the horizon, so we were periodically getting updates from central office um, via the uh, email system here. We did have parents coming to pick up their kids uh, early that day. We had um, maybe 40 parents came in early to pick up their kids because of the anxiety of possible severe weather. But for us, we just continued to stay in routine, keep kids calm, don't overreact, and uh, but know that we have to uh, uh, have a plan in place if something happens. So we're watching the skies. And we go ahead and follow through with our dismissal plan. At uh, a certain point, I lost all cell phone communication and landline. Around 3.30, we had, um, I would say, 70 to 80 kids spill into our building from um, buses en route from the dual language program within our school district and then also the daycare systems that were en route uh, seeking shelter. Tornado preparedness. Areas of refuge for educational facilities. Strategically placing building occupants in the best available refuge area will greatly reduce the risk of injury or death during a tornado. The Federal Emergency Management Agency noted selecting the best available refuge area involves three main steps. One, determine how much refuge area is required to house building occupants. Two, Review construction drawings and inspect the building to identify the strongest portions of the building and assess the site to identify potential threats from tree, pole, and windborne missiles. At 3.35 we started to move into duck and cover shelter in place. So we started to move children into certain pockets of the library and pockets of the interior hallway between the office and the library. We have a room called the vault. Uh, where we keep a lot of uh, secure documents. We put several children in there with, with a few teachers. We put several children in the principal's office and in the assistant principal's office. We had kids under desk. Now it's about 3.40 and all of our kids are either in pockets of the library, in corners, and in more secure places than just in the big library um, and in certain rooms in this interior hallway. And at that point I was alerted by my custodian, Mr. V, you need to come and look at this. Uh, and so I ran out the back door and looked out the window and at that point I saw that EF3 tornado coming through my neighborhood about two streets over coming straight at us. By the grace of God that tornado came into the path of our school into this backfield it took a right and went around our school and instead of hitting it correctly what it did was it went in between the school and the neighborhood and took out 20 cars and lifted some of them into a field and tore up the roof and these, these side uh, walls of this, these classrooms, but it didn't make a direct hit. And once that happened, we got up, we smelt natural gas, it was strong within a matter of seconds. It was so strong that we had to get out of the building quickly. It's been a story of surviving. Tornado preparedness, natural gas in educational facilities. Natural gas is non-toxic, colorless, and odorless, and is a combustible fuel. For detection and safety, natural gas is odorized with an unpleasant odorant known as mercaptan. After a tornado, school administrators should be aware of the possibility of broken gas lines. If a natural gas leak is suspected, school administrators should immediately evacuate the area and call emergency authorities from a safe location. We see immediately lots of destruction of our teachers' cars and cars that are just, you know, all turned over, you know, upside down, things, you know, we see all the front doors are wide open, we see debris everywhere, we see our homes back, back towards the uh, south that are just, you know, basically just destroyed. So we run in, run in thinking we're going to find 300 students and staff in our libraries, in our, you know, in the shelter in place areas. And we're, you know, screaming for Mr. Bircher, we're screaming for uh, Ms. Swagger, the uh, assistant principal, anyone that we can think of and holler their name. And there's not a sound, there's not a noise. And all of a sudden we get the whiff of the gas smell. We start realizing there's natural gas leak here. He did a lot of damage. He took rooftop air conditioning units and threw them a hundred yards away and 
Uh, you know, we're, we're, we'll be doing construction on this school for the remainder of this summer. Uh, but within a week, we were back in school. Our general contractor came over. We started looking at you know, what we're going to do here. So water damage, water removal was the first priority. Boarding up the windows uh, was a priority. And then, then planning, you know, the short-term repairs and then, then the longer-term repairs. The playground, tons of debris that were in the wood chips that the, in the fall zones where the kids were or would play. So it was just deemed that, you know what, we're, we're not sure about this structurally. It's not safe to be on it anyway. So uh, we did extensive amount of cleanup on the playground areas. In our post meetings of what we have to do better. We, so we've got to figure out you know, a, different, a different communication system. And we're working on that right now through uh, you know, high powered uh, hand radios that have repeater towers or that we can get a hold of uh, where all of our campus administrators have one. And we have several other central offices that go right along with our bus system right along with our maintenance so that we can get a hold of people in the event something like that happens again. Tornado preparedness, school crisis communications. Communications play a critical role in facilitating response and recovery efforts for schools. School district and campus administrators are responsible for establishing a means of communication to get information from one place to the next during the response phase. Example, two-way radios, linked communications with first responders, etc. Ineffective crisis and communications can prevent proper response of structured emergency plans. Technical infrastructures need to be outlined and in place for use during times of an emergency. Our structure helped, it did wonderful, it did exactly what it's supposed to do. The, you know, the, the units came loose up top like they're supposed to versus ripping off the, the you know, the entire, you know, roof. And, uh, you know, our, our, our awnings, they, they, they released like they're supposed to versus, you know, you know, doing major structural damage that we talked about earlier that we didn't have. So, I mean, I think it, you know, architecturally it went just like it was supposed to have gone. Tornado preparedness, structural design of educational facilities. Consider the structure, building envelope, and exterior mounted equipment to mitigate physical damage. Calculate structural loads in accordance with ASCE 7 or local building code. Determine structural load resistance. Plan and design educational facilities to meet the factor design loads determined by an architectural engineer and Consider material selections for durability against high winds and future maintenance and repair expenses.